Come back to me with all your heart. Don't let fear keep us apart. Trees do bend, though straight and tall. So must we to others call. Long have I waited for your coming home to me and living deeply our new life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you. My dear friends, we gather here today on the Monday of the third week of Lent. As we continue our restless journey with Christ, we continue to first rejoice in God's love for us and for this tremendous opportunity to turn away from sin and to be faithful to the gospel. We also are mindful of those obstacles and bumps that are in our journey that often lead us away from Christ. And because of those sins, we cry out for mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. May your faith, unfailing compassion, O Lord, cleanse and protect your church. And since without you she cannot stand secure, May she be always governed by your grace through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Kings. Naaman, the army commander of the king of Aram, was highly esteemed and respected by his master. For through him the Lord had brought victory to Aram. But valiant as he was, the man was a leper. Now the Armenians had captured in a raid on the land of Israel a little girl who became the servant of Naaman's wife. If only my master would present himself to the prophet in Samaria, she said to her mistress, he would cure him of his leprosy. Naaman went and told his lord just what the slave girl from the land of Israel had said. Go, said the king of Aram, I will send a letter along to the king of Israel. So Naaman set out, taking along ten silver talents, six thousand gold pieces, and ten festival garments. To the king of Israel he brought the letter which read, With this letter I am sending my servant Naaman to you that you may cure him of his leprosy. When he read the letter, the king of Israel tore his garments and exclaimed, Am I a God with power over life and death, that this man should send someone to me to be cured of leprosy? Take note, you can see he is only looking for a quarrel with me. When Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his garments, he sent word to the king, why have you torn your garments? Let him come to me and find out that there is a prophet in Israel. Naaman came with his horses and chariots and stopped at the door of Elisha's house. The prophet sent him the message, Go and wash seven times in the Jordan, and your flesh will heal, and you will be clean. But Naaman went away angry, saying, I thought he would surely come out and stand there to invoke the Lord his God, and he would move his hand over the spot and thus cure the leprosy. Are not the rivers of Damascus, the Ambia, and the Phiphar better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be cleansed? With this he turned about in anger and left. But his servants came up and reasoned with him. My father, they said, if the prophet had told you to do something extraordinary, would you not have done it? All the more, since he said to you, Wash and be clean, should you do as he said. So Naaman went down and plunged into the Jordan seven times, as the word of the man of God. 
His flesh became again like the flesh of a little child, and he returned with his whole retinue to the man of God. On his arrival, he stood before him and said, Now I know there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <coughs> a thirst is my soul for the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? A thirst is my soul for the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? All that hind longs for the one he waters, so my soul longs for you, O God. A thirst is my soul for the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? A thirst is my soul for God, the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? A thirst is my soul for the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? Send forth your light and your fidelity. They shall lead me on, and bring me to your holy mountain, to your dwelling place. A thirst is my soul for the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? Then I will go to the altar of God, the God of my gladness and joy. Then I will give you thanks upon the harp, O God, my God. A thirst is my soul for the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I hope in the Lord, I trust in his word. With him there is kindness and plenteous redemption. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the people in the synagogue of Nazareth, Amen, I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his own native place. Indeed, I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the sky was closed for three and a half years, and a severe famine spread over the entire land. It was to none of these that Elijah was sent, but only to a widow in Zarephath, in the land of Sidon. Again, there were many lepers in Israel during the time of Elisha the prophet, yet not one of them was cleansed, but only Naaman the Syrian. When the people in the synagogue heard this, they were filled with fury, they rose up, drive him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town had been built, to hurl him down headlong. But he passed through the midst of them and went away. My brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You know, sometimes people don't like to be challenged. They don't like to be told that perhaps they're not as good as they may think they are. And I think that's what Jesus was trying to tell these people in Nazareth. They probably had this over-exaggeration of themselves as the chosen race, God's chosen people. And because of that, they probably thought they could do no wrong. And so then Jesus pointed out two of their familiar prophets and who God sent them to, that great prophet Elijah, that he was sent to that poor widow in Zarephath. Now, mind you, she was a foreigner, not one of the chosen people. And so to the Jewish people was probably unworthy. But it was there during the famine, if you recall the story, that all she had was a bit of flour and a bit of oil. And as soon as that would have run out, she and her son knew that they had no more food and that they would die. And Elijah asked for a little bit of that, to share that. And she did. And then, if you remember correctly, the jar of flour never emptied. The jar 
for a jug of oil never was empty either. And through the entire famine, she was saved. And then, as we just heard in our first reading, we heard about Naaman, who was a Syrian. And Jesus said, there are many lepers in Israel, but Elisha cured the foreigner. And I think many times those words of Jesus are speaking to us. Because many times we think, well, we're Catholic. You know, those gates of heaven are just going to fling open for us because we deserve it. And I think Jesus is reminding us that we are as sinful as everybody else. We are in need of repentance as everybody else. We are in need of a Redeemer as everybody else. So let's not be filled with arrogance. Let us not be filled with this self-righteousness. But instead, during this Lenten season, to look inward and to find those areas that we must change. I think one of the saddest lines in Scripture we heard today, but he passed through the midst of them and went away. How sad that would be that Jesus went away from us. Let us not be self-righteous and arrogant. Let us be humble and cry out for mercy and reform our lives. Today we are united as the body of Christ. We offer petitions to God our Father that the church may continue to be purified and sanctified through the grace and mercy of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the ends of the earth may know the saving power of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for our world, for an end to violence in Ukraine, for peace along the globe, for a conversion of hearts of those who inflict pain, suffering, and terror. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our nation, for an end to abortion, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who experience rejection or failure may find hope and strength in the gospel message, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the grace of God's words and sacraments may transform all of us into the image of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for the sick and their healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that the faithful departed may rest in eternal peace in God's heavenly kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For your needs, your intentions, that we bring to the Lord today in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us together pray an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things. I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you have already come. I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Joining our prayers into one. We lift them up to God our Father, praying as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Merciful Father, you sent your Son to save us. Look with favor on our petitions. We now offer in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go, announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, 
Remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom.